Amazon delivery driver quits job in mid shift, leaves the delivery van at a gas station with the keys in the ignition. That is not where it stops. He then went on Twitter and he tweeted about it and put it on social media. Now he is 22 years old. Now, why is this important? On Savage Finance, the other day, I did a video about hiring people. Check it out. And I specifically referenced the tendency of younger people. Also, let's go on and look at what is happening right now. We have the Rona. We have people being laid off left and right. And in the middle of the Rona, this person quit his job in 2020 and tweeted about it. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more about the changing mores of people in work and why corporate America is about to get way more hostile than you can imagine. If this is your first time here, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we build businesses. And on this channel, I talk about social commentary in the economy. At Savage Finance, I dive into the details about how to start a business, such as starting a holding company. And, you know, there, there are many, many videos over there that's going to help you manage your money and make more money. So be sure to subscribe to Savage Finance and begin watching all the videos over there. All right, so let's talk about why is this so remarkable? I'm going to go back in my history. There was a two year period where I worked seven days a week. I worked essentially, let's see, my 40 plus 16. 56 to 60 hours consistently a week for two years. This guy was working 60 hours a week and I don't understand how Amazon pays his drivers. So this may be incorrect, but I have a feeling that if they're paid per hour, that if he was working 60 hours a week, he was getting his 40 and then he was getting overtime which put him at $1,100 per week at 22 years old. And this is the craziest thing because when I was part of the working community way back in the dinosaur ages, in the dinosaur days, no one I know would have done that. They would have uh, given two weeks notice. They would have, um, represented even if the job sucked they still would have gave two weeks notice because that job would have been a reference going forward and this guy here's one of the things that you you have and social media is a big big part of this social media has gassed up people that they can quit jobs and become bosses but here is the problem with that see if you have bad habits for jobs you're going to have bad habits for your business. And these bad habits are going to create a lot of problems for you going forward. And, you know, it's just interesting that I would find this story after I posted the video on Savage Finance. It is crazy what has happened with work ethic in America. Everybody wants to be boss. Everyone wants to be a CEO. Everyone wants to live this life of financial abundance, but people don't want to work because I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there like you're 22 years old. So yeah, you are working long and hard, but you are making money, stack your money, find a better job. Don't just quit your job, leave the key and then tweet about it. One of the things that cracks me up is these people who do these internet 
fan, this internet attention grabbing videos of quitting their jobs. They don't just quit their jobs. Like this news reporter who quit her job on the air. She's like, I'm out of here. There is another element that is present with the current generation that didn't exist before in this social media. There is this element to perform for your peers. There is this element to act all alley and uneducated and just like a crazy person for your peers. It's like, yeah, he quit Amazon. He left the keys in the ignition. He was like, deuces, I'm out of here, man, I'm out of here. See, this is one of the reasons that it is so hard to start a company and hire people because of this element that is part of the younger generation. Uh, someone put a comment like, why is this old generation want to talk crap about the new younger? Because of stuff like this. He quit his job. In mid shift, he didn't even have the decency to take them back their van. He just went ahead, hey, I'm out. I can't take it no more. And you gotta understand, what was he going through? If you, I, I don't understand this. You know, maybe you can help me out and you can put it in the comments. You can school me on why would a person do something like that because that was one of the worst things you can do when I was a young buck. Just walk off a job, no call, no show. And this would follow you. This would follow you. I don't know how it works today. I don't know how it goes. But understand that America has changed. And this is why my video where I was talking about I don't know if I'm going to release that video before this one, but if I haven't look for it, it's going to talk about America is ready for socialism because of this present element where people don't want to work. People don't want to put in the time. People don't want to pay dues. And this is why if you are a young business owner, you're going to get so much pushback and blowback from older workers who feel like, well, I he only 27 years old. I'm 42 years old. I know more than this young whippersnapper. But the young whippersnapper has provided you a job that pays you money. Respect the hustle. And this is the, the craziest thing because we got the Rona right now. He did this during the Rona. I want you to think about this where jobs are really hard to find. And Amazon will virtually hire anybody for any position because they need people. The Amazon has a very high turnover rate because, you know, working in a hot ass warehouse is hot and people come and go. This is the transportation logistics industry. Like take truck and driving. Truck drivers get new jobs, quit new job. It's a revolving door for truck driving. And essentially, these are hard jobs. And this is why America is having problems being competitive in the world. Because you think someone in China would have did that? No, they wouldn't have did that in China. I mean, China, they, they, they work in overtime. They're doing whatever they need to do. It wouldn't happen in China. Wouldn't have happened in Vietnam. It wouldn't have happened in Thailand because these people are competitive. And this is a fundamental aspect of American culture that is present today that is unbelievable, that is crazy. Because if he had just did this, that bad enough. But the fact that he tweeted about it, he went on social media and let people know and it, it, it's just crazy. Like take trucking, like truck drivers will consistently be in and out of different company seats. Well, the pay's a little bit better over here, I'm out. And a lot of times, because I had a friend that owned a trucking company 
And I remember one time we were talking, he said, I gotta, I gotta fly out of town. I was like, why? He said, I gotta go get my truck. This guy had left his truck with a load parked on the side of the road. And this was a few years ago. So this is the kind of stuff that you have employees. And this kind of goes back to the Rayshard Brooks thing. Rayshard Brooks, make no mistake about it, was resisting arrest. He was actually in combative activity with the police and that's what got him killed. There is this mindset, there is this mentality that if you have power, you have money, you should let those who don't have power and money do whatever they want to do. That the police shouldn't have tried to arrest him for being drunk. The police should have just let him go. The police should have took him home. And there is this disconnect between reality and assumption. Because when you're in a position where you're drunk, behind the wheel of a car, the police are gonna arrest you. They're not gonna take you home and let you sleep it off. And you wanna know why? Typically, people who drink and drive once do it again and again and again. I used to work in the emergency room. I have seen the, the carnage of a drunk driver. The drunk driver is in a lesser, you know, we had trauma one, trauma two, trauma three. These were for the serious cases of people who were literally fighting for their lives because this drunk driver just rolled off into them or was driving on the wrong way of the street. The drunk driver, because they were drunk and all relaxed, they were fine. A few, you know, scratches here and there. And, you know, I remember one of the worst things to happen was this, this drunk driver ran into this car and this woman was pregnant. And her husband was in the passenger seat and she was driving and this guy broadsided their vehicle and he broke the woman's legs, arm, shoulder, the baby died and the woman uh, about a week later she died from her injuries. So this man lost his wife and his unborn child due to the fact that someone wanted to get behind the wheel and after drinking lost his family just like that. So this is why I have no sympathy for anyone who is drinking and driving. I don't care if the police beat your ass. I really don't because you have made a decision for other people when you drink and drive. And this is one of the things that we as a society are getting away from and it's called shame and censure. Like when you do something bad, People talk bad about you. No, no, no. We, we, we don't want to talk bad about nobody. You know, yeah, you know, because I, I saw comments like the police should have carried him home and let him sleep it off. Really? You understand, and all of this talk, which is part of this culture of defunding the police, the 99 point percent of the public's interactions with the police are fine. 99 point percent, you know, they pull you over, you get a ticket, you go about your business. 99 percent. So this one percent where things go wrong and tragic and people lose their lives, like George Floyd, uh, this gentleman who had a gun on him, he told the cop he had the gun on him and the cop shot him anyway. You know, that that one percent is tragic. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be changed. And the police needs better training. But we're going to would you get rid of your business if you had a 1% failure rate? You were like 99.99% of the time you were just fine. Things went the way that they were supposed to. And this 1% defective failure rate is like, yeah, I'm going to get rid of my whole business because of this 1%. People would think you were crazy. And also like with this Amazon driver, I'm just sitting here and I like when I read it, I was just floored. But this is the behavior. And also when I did that video about hiring people, I was speaking from personal experience. I wasn't speaking from assumption that I don't know during the Rona if it's going to be like that, because uh, I know when times were good, literally we would talk to people. We want to bring them in for an interview and they would not show up and they wouldn't call. 
over 50%. 50% of the people would not just show up. 50%. Now, I did notice that if it was an older person, they always showed up. Always. Always. An older or someone with a family or someone who needed money, they always showed up. But this, you, this young generation, during the Rona, when jobs are not easily replaced, the people going to get all up in their feelings and they're going to be like, hey, I'm out of this bitch. I'm out. I'm quitting. I'm done. And they're going to go on social media and they're going to tweet about it. They're going to do Instagram. They're going to do a Facebook post and they're going to get virtual dap because, hey, man, <clears throat> yeah, you know, you 22 years old. You ain't doing nothing. They, they shouldn't be working you that hard. Here's the fact. When you are in a position where you cannot provide upper value, you're going to work a crappy job. These be facts. And unless you make yourself more valuable to the world and you create a higher level of value in yourself, you're going to be working crappy jobs. This is the facts this this is how it goes this is and the game ain't going to change because let me tell you what's going to happen during this rona the companies have figured out how they can be more productive and how they can make more money with less staff so you may hate your job but your job may let you go your job may get rid of you before you're ready to be let go so work on increasing your skill sets work on increasing your value Work on making yourself more valuable. And one of the things you can do is go below and get 30 days to 2,500 so you can start your own business and you can be the boss. Because this, this is where most, so many people want to be, but they don't want to do the work. So go below, get 30 days to 2,500, get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success, and begin working on making yourself more valuable so you can get more money. So that's all I got for you guys today. Check out this next video right here.